present our fellow John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Things that go bump in the night, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender with this week's guests, Larry Martin and John Barrow. Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. With the war now into its third violent year, it must seem in the early months of 1942 that the skies over Germany are raining bombs as mighty armadas of RAF bombers, often up to a thousand strong, loose their deadly loads on the cities below. The skies above southern England are full of menace too, not from Hitler's Luftwaffe, but from thunder clouds, as Captain Mannering and his men, travelling back to their headquarters in Jones's butcher's van, pull up outside a forbidding old country house. Now then, Wilson, you're the navigator. Where are we? Well, um, according to my calculations, we should be just outside Jones's shop in the high street. <laughs> in other words, you're lost. What? <laughs> Well, I'm not the only one who's lost. I would say we all were. How much petrol have we got, Jones? According to the petrol gouge, about <laughs> half a gallon. <laughs> half a ga... Just a minute. Walker! Did somebody call? No need to shout in my ear, Walker. Oh, sorry, Captain Mannery. Uh, what was it you wanted? Did you fill the petrol tank up yesterday? Yeah, that's right. In that case, why is it empty now? Ah, well, you see, I asked him who wanted four gallons, so I took some out of the tank. How dare you tamper with my fuel? You haven't paid me for it yet. And you know my terms, cash on delivery. Take his name, Wilson. <laughs> Got any paper? Well, that's all right, Mr Wilson. I'll give you my bill for the petrol. You can write it on the back of that. How dare you. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that's a nasty cold you got there, sir. You should be between sheets. <laughs> Never mind about that, Jones. Now, look, we can't sit cooped up in this van all night. We'd better go up to that house and get some help. We are not going out in the pouring rain with that cold, Captain Henry. You'll catch pneumonia. Don't talk rubbish. Let me out. Well, I can't allow you that, sir. Well, I no, will I not allow you, sir. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what do you do? I will not allow you, sir. What do you do? Take your hands off. You're strangling me. I'm sorry about that, sir, but I must restrain you. I will not allow you to catch pneumonia. Nonsense. Drop a rain hurt me. Jones is right, sir. <laughs> I knew a man once I just about <laughs> your age and build he was he had a slight head cold and he went out in the rain five days later I was screwing the handles of his coffin thank you Fraser I know how to get you up to that house without getting wet Mr Mannering we got some tarpaulins in the back here. We can rig up a sort of canopy. Hang on a tick, we'll come round. Come on, Pike, Godfrey, give us a hand. Look, this is all really quite unnecessary, though. Don't you fuss yourself, Mr. Manring. We'll look after you, don't you worry. Oh, here they come, they got the tarpaulin, and they're sticking a rifle in each corner, sir. Mm, highly ingenious. Yes, it reminds me of those covered litters they had in the Sudan. There was a Nubian slave at each corner. And he used to carry the sultanas in them. <laughs> Seems rather an elaborate arrangement just to carry dried fruit. <laughs> Not that sort of sultanas. The wives of the sultanas. Oh, I see. <laughs> right, Mr. Mannering, you can come out now. Right out, Joe. I'll get down and I'll help you out, sir. Hold your corner of the tarpaulin, Pikey. I am holding it steady. No, you're not. You're juggling your rifle and the water will dribble on Mr. Manning. You don't get any dribbles on the officer. Right, now, come on, Mr. Manning. I've got you. Jones, Jones, will you stop mauling me about? <laughs> let me get down on my own. I must protect your welfare. I will not have you getting pneumonia. Right, you can let go now. I'm down. Get down, Wilson. Let's go, sir. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, well, I'm, isn't this a nice shelter, sir? Awfully clever of you, Walker. Oh, it's nothing, really. Now, if we all keep close together under the tarpaulin, we won't get wet. You get in front, Sergeant Wilson. That will stop the dribbles getting on, Mr. Manning. And you, sir, you get behind Sergeant Wilson and put your arms round his waist, like that. Look, just a minute, Jones. I'm in command here, and I'll give the orders. 
I assure you, sir, I had no intention of you slurping your officership. I, I must try to keep you dry, sir. I'd better do as he says, sir. After all, we, we don't want you to get it. I don't mind you putting your arms round my waist. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much, Wilson. And I'll put my arms round your waist, sir, if that's all right with you. Oh, get on with it, Jones. Right, walk up, Fraser, up, Pike, Godfrey. Right. Right. Hold your rifle steady. We don't want a sagging cantaloupe. Ah, here we're all ready now. To the house, by the left, where? March! Lee, right, Lee, right, Lee, right. You know, I feel like right. the Emperor in Aladdin. I feel like I'm at a Jewish wedding. That'll do, Walker. <laughs> you get any dribbles on you, Mr. Manning? I told you not to juggle a canopy pipe. I'm not juggling it. I'm all right, Jones. Just keep going. Very good, sir. Left, right, left, right, left, right, Oh! Well, we made it, sir. We as dry as a bone. Look, the tarpaulin's sagging with the weight of water. Yes, yes, I suppose we should be grateful that none of us has got wet. Right, Pike. Go and ring the doorbell. Yes, Mr. Man, ring right away. Oh, look out, look out! Yes! Oh, 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 from tarpaulin all over me. Don't play the fool, Pike. Because I'm all wet! Well, you shouldn't have pulled your rifle away from the tarpaulin. Stupid boy. You told me to ring the bell. Now look at me. I'm, I'm with through. Yeah, don't shake it all over me. Stop scattering yourself all over, Mr. Manring. Go on, Wilson. Knock at the door. All right, sir. Good heavens. Oh, look, sir. The door's open. Well, let's get inside. Well, you can't walk into a strange house without being invited. We can't stand out here in the pouring rain. Come along. Hello? Hello? Anyone at home? Can you see a light, Switch Wilson? Just a moment, sir. Ah, here we are. Hmm? They're not working, sir. There are some candles over here, sir. Good. Light them, Fraser. And you, Godfrey. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Mannery. Here we are, sir. Hello? Anyone there? Hey, isn't it creepy? Just like that film, The Old Dark House. Oh, hey, there is something weird about it. <laughs> uh, no mistake. Oh, dear. I think I shall have to go. You're scared, Tory. No, no, it's, uh, it's all that water. You'll just have to wait, Godfrey. <laughs> now, everybody keep absolutely quiet so we can hear if anybody answers. Hello? <laughs> Did you hear that? It's the sound of the death watch below. <laughs> they haunt these old places. I, the riddle with them. What are you talking about? It's Pike's teeth chattering. <laughs> Told you to keep quiet, Pike. I can't help it, Miss Manny. I'm for free. Please, please. Hey, well, I really think you ought to get those wet clothes off, sir. Oh, oh my goodness, yeah. Can't stand around with nothing on. Mm, permission to speak, sir. He could wear one of those flag things on the wall there. Tarbards. I beg your pardon, Fraser? Tarbards. They're not flags, they're tarbards. Oh, yes, of course. Go and get one down, Jones. Very good, sir. Right, Pike, take your clothes off. Don't like to. Now, come on, Frank, come on. Do as you're told. All right, in. But don't anybody look. <laughs> don't look! <laughs> You know, Wilson, I think that boy's going soft in the head. <laughs> the way you mollycoddle him only makes him worse. Well, I feel sort of responsible for him, sir, you know. I mean, if I don't look after him, maybe uh, that is, uh, Mrs. Pike, goes around with a miserable look on her face. Now, as you know, if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's people looking miserable. Yeah. Stop my mind, then. What is it, Fraser? Can he no feel a strange atmosphere in this house? I tell you, sir, there's something amiss. Something strangely amiss. Oh, stop rolling your eyes about. You look like Eddie Cantor. <laughs> Bound to be some perfectly logical explanation for all this. You can all turn round now, Private Pike wearing his tabloid. I don't half feel silly, Mr. Manning. I've got nothing on my legs. I'll tell you something. You'd win first prize in the Nobly Knees contest. Personally, 
I think he looks rather nice. I put it in half draft. He ran the hours, your father. <laughs> I'm freezing to death, Mr. Manry. For goodness sake, stop whining, Pike. Just drill up your uniform and bring it with you. Now, come on. We better explore this house. We'll try the upstairs first. <laughs> Permission to whisper, sir. <laughs> There's something horrible about. Turn here, dog. Come on. That's no ordinary dog. <laughs> it's a hound. A hound. Uh, hi. <laughs> hey, 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 did you hear that? There's a whole pack of them. There's a whole pack of horrible hounds. Don't panic, don't panic. Uh, uh, Jones, a pack of horrible big hounds. Fire, Jones. <laughs> Dogs are outside somewhere. They can't harm us. Come on, let's go upstairs. Bring the candle straight up. Aye, 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 sir. You know, Mr. Jones, I really think we ought to get back to the van. I'm afraid I don't get on very well with dogs. Even little dogs, they upset me. My sister had a peak in ease once. It used to jump up at me quite an awful lot, and in the end, I had to order it to leave. <laughs> well, we'd better not get left here on our own. Come on. Right, now, we'll make our way from the top of the stairs here along the landing. And we'll try each door. Here goes. Anybody there? No. Right, let's try the next one. Ah, this is a bathroom. And this is another little room. Captain <laughs> <laughs> Manning, before you close that door, I, I wonder... Yes, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> You'll have to catch us up. Oh, oh thank you, sir. Now, uh, let's see what's in here. Ah, this must be the master bedroom. Anybody here? It really is very strange, Wilson. This house seems empty. Well, whoever was here must have left in a hurry. Look, you see, the, the bed's turned down and there's a fire burning in the grate. Ah, uh, yeah. The question is, cops and wondering... What made them leave, huh? <laughs> An old house, a fire still burning, and not a human soul about. This is a haunt of the undead, if ever I saw one. <laughs> and hear but the wind and the rain. And those ghostly hounds Howling, and howling, howling Oh, come now, Fraser Ah, but why are they howling? Are they of this mortal world? Are they, are they the hounds of hell? I told you to stop rolling your eyes <laughs> All right, Pike Put the uniform by the fire to dry Yes, Mr. Manry Now, pay attention, everybody it's quite on the cards that this storm may last all night. So we should just have to make the best of a bad job. This room's very comfortable. There's a big four-poster and a single bed. I suggest we all settle down here for the night. I shall take the single bed. The rest of you make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> Where am I going to sleep, sir? In the four-poster, of course. Where are the others going to sleep? In the four-poster, with you. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. Uh, you know, Wilson, you really are one of the most selfish men I've ever met. <laughs> what gives you the right to think that you should have a bed to yourself? Well, I... Uh, right, that's settled. <laughs> Fraser, Godfrey, Walker, Jones. Yes, sir? You sleep in the big bed with Sir Wilson. NCOs at the top, other ranks at the bottom. <laughs> Mike, you'll have to sleep in the chair. That's not fair. It's always me who has to sleep on his own. I'm awfully sorry, Frank, but... Uh, if it was up to me, I'd let you share the bed with me. But Mr. Mannering's the officer, you see. Well, come with me to the bathroom, then. Hmm? I've got to wash my hands and clean my teeth. You know, Mum wouldn't let me go to bed without washing my hands and cleaning my teeth. Yes, but you see, I haven't got a toothbrush. Surely you can give it a miss for one night. I'll tell Mum. No. And that's that. Now, settle down, everybody. I'm going to bed. Stop, Mr. Mannering, you mustn't. What are you talking about, Jones? You mustn't get into that bed, sir. 
The sheets will be damp. I will not allow you to have pneumonia. Nonsense. No, you sit by the fire, sir. I'll warm up the bed for you. Hey, what are you going to do, Jonesy? I'm going to do what the young serving wenches did in days of yore when they warmed up the bed for their masters. Blimey. I don't think Mr. Mannery wants to cuddle you all night. <laughs> all right, Mr. Walker. I'm going to put some hot coals in this warming pan. There we are. Really, this is not necessary, Jones. Let me be the best judge of that, sir. There, I'll just put the warming pan into your bed. And in a few minutes, it'll be lovely and warm. Right, get into bed, everybody. This is all wrong, I tell you. It's all wrong. What are you muttering about, Fraser? You know how I hate mutters. I can't see why we should have to sleep at the bottom of the bed. Could you not toss for it? Certainly not. Now, do as you're told and get into bed. Yeah, I told you those sheets were damp, Mr. Manning. Look at all that steam coming out of your bed. Quite you if you're right, Jones. Excuse me, sir. I don't think that is steam. Looks rather like a smoke to me. What? Blimey. It is smoke. The bed's on fire. Get some water, quick. There's a jug on the washstand, Walker. Right, I've got it. Stand clear, everybody. Here, Pikey, take this jug and go and get some more water from the bathroom. It's the second on the right. Right out, Jones. Really, Jones, of all the stupid, idiotic things to do. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mann. I was only trying to warm you up. Well, it stopped burning anyway. The bed's wet through now. Where am I going to sleep? In the four poster, sir. <laughs> Officers and NCOs at the top, other ranks at the bottom. All right. <laughs> Shut the door, Fraser. Drafty enough in here as it is. Right you. It's all right, Mr. Manning. I've got the water. <laughs> oh. oh, Mr. Manning. I'm all wet again. <laughs> Uncle Arthur. Uncle Arthur. Not now, Mavis. <laughs> Uncle Arthur. What? Oh, it's you, Frank. Now go back to sleep. Uncle Arthur. Well, what is it? I can hear someone coming up the stairs. Listen. Hmm? Yes, right. I'd better wake Captain Manry. Uh, uh, sir. Mm. Sir? Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes, what is it? Listen, sir. Oh, it's coming along the landing. Right. Out of bed, everybody. Quickly now. Get your rifles. Right, sir. Shh. It stopped. It's turning the door handle. It's coming in. Don't panic. It's coming in. It's one of the undead to come to claim its victims. <laughs> oh, look, look at that ghastly white hand clutching in the air. It's searching desperately for a victim. Yeah, the light switch. It's working now. Look, it's going to speak. I say, you chaps, what are you doing sleeping in my bed? That's what Grumpy said to Snow White. <laughs> well? He doesn't sound very undead to me. Who are you? I'm Captain Cadbury, and this is my HQ. HQ? What of? Well, this is the dog training school. Oh, so that's what we've been hearing. Yes, they've been a bit restless tonight. Storms upset them. Who are you? Oh, I'm Captain Mannering, CEO of Warmington on Sea Home Guard. What are the dogs for, sir? Well, we train them as tracker dogs for the war department. Of course, of course. Oh, oh I always knew it was something of that description. We had a bit <laughs> slack at the moment, so I've given the rest of the staff the weekend off. So that's why the house is deserted. Anyway, what are you doing here? Oh, we were returning from an exercise when our transport ran out of fuel. Oh, I see. Well, look, as you seem to have made yourselves at home, you may as well spend the rest of the night here, and I'll take you to a garage first thing tomorrow. That's very kind of us, sir. Uh, well, good night, and see you in the morning. Good night. Morning, Captain Cadbury. Ah, uh, good morning, Captain Mannering. Your chap's ready, Sergeant. Almost, sir. Well, uh, when everyone's here, I'll take you across and get your petrol. That's very good of you, sir. Oh, not at all. Morning, everybody. Good morning, Pikey. Oof. It's cold, isn't it? Pike. What are you doing wandering about in just a vest and muffler? Where's your uniform jacket? I can't put that on. It's 
still damp. Catch me death. You'll get even colder without a jacket at all. Mum says I mustn't put damp things on. Look, I'm sure we can find him something to put on. I mean, I'll tell you what. There's an old greatcoat hanging behind the kitchen door. Perhaps you'd like to cut along and get it. A private pipe. Yeah, yeah very good, sir. Thank uh, you. Well, we can't have the poor chap wandering about half starkers, can we? Might frighten the dogs, eh? Yes, right. <laughs> I was there, Captain, who gave us quite a fright last night. Yes, sorry about that. The storm put the lights out, and I was outside tinkering with the generator when you arrived. Otherwise, I'd have been there to greet you. Got the coat, Captain Cadbury? Oh, jolly good. It's a bit holy, though. <clears throat> holy? Looks like one of Fagin's cast-offs. <laughs> Actually, it's an old German greatcoat that we use for training. The holes are where the dogs have savaged it. Was anybody wearing it at the time? <laughs> oh, I should jolly well think so, yes. Those stains aren't red ink, you know. Oh, I don't think I want to wear it then, thank you all the same. <laughs> you'll wear it and be grateful, Pike. But it's been savaged, Mr. Manning. And so will you be, if you don't be quiet, boy. <laughs> now let's go and get that petrol. Right, now we can take a shortcut across the fields. I'm afraid I haven't got any cans to carry the petrol in, but there's a stack of empty gin bottles over there by the dog pens. Ah, must be quite an expensive business, Wilson. Hmm? What is, sir? Training dogs on gin. <laughs> right, come along, then. <laughs> ah, yes. More than enough bottles here for our purpose. Hey, Johnson, just look at that pile of gin bottles. This Cadbury fella must be a real old soak. Oh, yeah, well, they drink a lot of gin, officers do, you know. We had an officer in the Sudan who took the bottle... Ginny George, they used to call him. He drank three bottles a day for six weeks, and then he died. What the... Alcohol poisoning? No, a snake bit him. <laughs> right, man, take a couple of bottles each. That should do. Now, quiet! Settle down at once. We seem to have the dogs well under control, sir. Well, these are only half-trained raw recruits. The fully trained lot left yesterday. This is not a bad bunch, really. Except for that chap, Prince 439. He's a real troublemaker. Upsets the others. Really? Stand to attention, 439, and keep silent when I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh, well, have it your own way. Absolute slacker, that dog. Failed the course three times. I've had him on a charge twice. If he fails this time, he'll be out on his ear... You know how it is. You get one rotten apple. Oh, quite so, yes, yes. I have much the same trouble. Wilson, fall the men in. Very good, sir. All right, fall in, please. Okay. Now, then, nice brisk walk across the fields. Do us a world of good. Excuse me, sir. What is it? Do you want us to carry our gin bottles at the trail or at the slope? All right, that'll do, Wilson. <laughs> squad, squad, fam. Left turn. By the left. Quick, out, left. Right, left. Really is a lovely morning, isn't it, Captain Cadbury? Yes, absolutely first class. Not far to go now. We're nearly at the river. Ah, yes, yes, I see. Yes, well, once we got across that, we're practically at the garage. I can see a bridge anywhere, sir. Oh, there isn't one. We'll have to ford it. <clears throat> Very shallow at this time of year. Tell me, sir, those dogs of yours, what exactly do they do? Well, they're... Trained to track down German parachutists. You must have quite a way with dogs, sir. Oh, good Lord, I'm scared stiff of the brutes. I don't have anything to do with the training. I'm just in charge of admin. <laughs> Your dogs have got very loud voices, sir. <clears throat> oh, yes, on a clear day, they carry for miles. What happens when the dogs have tracked down a parachutist? Well, they hold him until the troops arrive. Of course, I'm talking about a fully trained dog. The ones here at the moment have only completed the first half of the course, the tracking bit. What's the second half of the course? Holding the parachutist. That's the most difficult part. They have to be trained not to tear the poor chap to pieces, limb from limb. Lord. Well, here we are. Left, right, left, right, squad. Halt! Excuse me, Captain, uh, but... Uh... 
Is this the shallow river you were talking about? Yes, that's right. Looks awfully deep to me. Yes, you're right, Sergeant. All that rain last night must have swollen it. It's practically oh. bursting the banks. Uh, uh, Captain Henry. What is it, Godfrey? I wonder if I might... Um... Yes, all right, but hurry up. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. Sorry about that, sir. He suffers from bladder trouble. I suppose seeing all this water has sort of stimulated him, eh? <laughs> yes, yes, great. Well, I think we'd better look for a suitable place to ford the river. Oh, good idea. Here, what's the matter? Those dogs are definitely getting louder. I think Walker's right, sir. Be quiet. Listen. Oh, crumbs! They must have got out. They won't come after us, will they, sir? Oh, I see no reason why they should. What's that smell? Someone eating sweets. Are you, Pike? No, Mr. Manreen. I, I, I had some hundreds and thousands, but I finished those at breakfast. Remember, Uncle Arthur, I offered you some, but you didn't want any. Yes. I didn't really think they'd go very well with bacon and eggs. There's a distinct smell of... Aniseed. That's it. Oh, no, I haven't got any aniseed balls. Mum wouldn't let me buy them. She said I might break my teeth. Aniseed! Oh, gosh, I've just remembered. That great coat the boy is wearing, it's soaked in aniseed to attract the dogs. What? Get it off at once, please. I can't. I'll catch cold. Look, sir, can't you control the dogs? Of course I can't. The horrible hounds are afterwards and you can't control them. They're tearing to pieces. Be quiet, Mike. Mike, you'd better get across the river as quickly as you can. I'm not going in there. I'll get all wet again. Don't argue. It looks ever so deep. Nonsense, boy. It'll barely come over your boots. Oh, Oh, all right, then. Here we go. Oh, no, it's all right. It's not too deep after all. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Mr. Manrin, the water has come over Pike's boots. In fact, it's come over his head. <laughs> Mr. Manrin, I'm all wet again. Stop complaining, boy. Probably stepped in a pothole. Get over to the other side, quickly. Oh, I'm going. But my mum will be ever so furious. Yes, she will, too. She gets terribly annoyed about things like this. Really? Yes. Here, that, those dogs sound very nasty, Mr. Mannering. We're safe enough, aren't we, Captain Cadbury, now the pack's across the river? Oh, not really, no. The dogs will be awfully angry when they get here. But they're quite liable to savage all of us. The horrible hands are coming liable to savage us all. Don't but panic! Don't, don't, don't panic! Don't, 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 don't panic! Oh... Right, quick, man. Across the river, all of you. All right, come on, man. Oh, water's awfully cold. Oh, never mind that, Wilson. Get a move on. Come on, man. Up. See, it's not very nice, is it? Be quiet, Pike. Give Godfrey a hand, somebody. Come on, Mr. Godfrey. You hang on to me. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Mr. Walker. Yeah. I bet it's a long time since you had a paddle, eh? Oh, yes, it is. Especially with the water up from my armpits. Keep going, man. We're going as fast as we can, man. Come on, you there. You know, these stones are terribly slippery underfoot. Stop complaining, Wilson. We're almost there. Right, up the bank. Oh, 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 give us a hand. Oh, 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 we made it, Mr. Manley. We made it. Well done, man. You know, I'm absolutely soaked. Never mind, Wilson. You're safe. That's oh. important. Dogs can't fall a cent across water. Believe me, Wilson, I'm pretty sure judge of these things. <laughs> I see. In that case, why are the dogs jumping straight into the river and swimming across? What? Good Lord. Run for it! Oh. Right, oh, man! Oh, 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 oh. That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur as Captain Mannering, John Le Measure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Larry Martin, Private Walker, and John Barron as Captain Cadbury. Things That Go Bump in the Night was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd and produced by John Dias.